century people used to believe that air is made up of only one substance until 18th century people used to believe that air is made up of only one substance single substance but later after many experiments it was proved that air is a mixture of many many gases so we we inhale air air so human beings how do they do the respiration process we inhale air through our, we inhale air through our nostrils that means through our nose and then the nostrils have some fine hair inside it and mucus lining also so what is the function of this fine hair and the mucus lining inside the nose it prevents the dust particles from entering the respiratory system it acts like a filter so this fine hair and mucus present in the nostrils prevents the dust particles from entering inside the respiratory system so that is the function of fine hair and mucus it acts as a filter so why you shouldn't breathe by your mouth sometimes if you breathe by your mouth your parents might tell you don't do mouth breathing process it is bad because what happens if you breathe by the mouth all the dust particles will directly enter your respiratory system if you breathe through the nostrils then the fine hair and mucus prevent the dust particles from entering but if you breathe through the mouth your dust particles will go directly into your mucus system directly will go into your respiratory system and then mouth breathing also causes dryness of the mouth you repeatedly feel that your mouth becomes dry so that is reasons why you shouldn't breathe your breathe by your mouth and then sometimes while traveling on the roads at the junctions we see traffic policemen standing and controlling the traffic they will be wearing masks around their mouth and nose why do they wear masks because the air has many gases in it some gases may be poisonous also so the vehicles traveling on the road will emit lot of pollution that is many gases so that gases may cause any health problem to their policeman's health that is the reason policemen wear the masks to prevent themselves from inhaling the poisonous gases then we can say that air is made up of many gases so the in that many gases the major components are nitrogen and oxygen so we can say that the air is 99% of the air is made up of nitrogen and oxygen and the remaining 1% of the air is carbon dioxide other gases water vapor dust and smoke so 99% of the air is oxygen and nitrogen and the remaining 1% is carbon dioxide co2 other gases water vapor and dust so the complete air is made up of water vapor oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen and dust and smoke now we will learn how now we will prove how air has all these gases so coming to the first one that is water vapor suppose if you take ice cold water in a glass steel glass say then you see small small droplets on the sides or the outer surface of the glass what is that so when the air comes in contact with the cool surface so the air has come in contact with the cool surface of the water that means the air has come in contact with the ice cold water then what happens it condenses the hot air condenses whenever it touches the cool surface and then the drops of water come on the cool surface that is the reason droplets of water are seen on the outer surface of the glass because when air is contacted with the cool surface it condenses and shows in the form of tiny droplets of water that is nothing but the condensation process so that tiny droplets of water are nothing but the water vapor so that proves the presence of water vapor in the air the heated air condenses or cools down and shows in the form of tiny droplets of water in the that tiny droplets of water are nothing but water vapor so water vapor is important for the water cycle you know water cycle you know what air gets heated up and then converts into water vapor and goes up into the sky and after it goes up into the sky as the altitude increases temperatures decrease so that is the reason it will be cooler as it goes up into the sky so those tiny droplets of water will become clouds and then when these clouds become heavy they come back condense and come back in the form of rain so that is water cycle right so in that water cycle water vapor is important so now you have understood water vapor either on cooling the water vapor condenses or either on heating also the water converts into water vapor in the form of steam water vapor tiny droplets so that is how water vapor is always present in the air then moving on to oxygen you take two beaker full of water 
two beakers full of water then put two candles light them that means light the candles with the match stick and then put two inverted glasses over the it that means you put two glasses one of smaller size one of larger size understood right two beakers full of water you have put two candles in it you have lighted the candles and in, you have inverted two glasses over it ceramic glasses transparent then what happens this is a burning candle rising water experiment so when this candle is burning two glasses are inverted over it so when you observe after some time what happens this candle will be keep the candle will continuously burn up to some time and then it will be turned off why because when the glass is inverted over the candle the glass has some amount of air inside it what is that air the air is a mixture of many gases so the burning process of the candle requires oxygen so the candle always burns only in the presence of oxygen so until oxygen is there in this inverted glass until the air is there in that air oxygen will be there the candle will burn as soon as the candle is about to switch off that means the oxygen content has depleted some amount of water will enter into the glass because the oxygen content has depleted decreased candle is about to burn off that means turn off so then one tenth of the glass will be filled with water that means when the oxygen level decreased the space which was occupied by the oxygen or the air will be replaced by the water inside so understood right then what is the difference between these two because it is a small glass the candle will get burned off quickly because it is a large glass the amount of air is more the candle will get burned off little bit late than this so burning occurs only in the presence of oxygen and then when the total oxygen is used up candle can no longer burn understood right when the total oxygen content in the glass completes the candle can no longer burn and this space is occupied by the oxygen inside the glass becomes empty so the, that space which was occupied by the oxygen air becomes empty when the candle burns off and then the water rises up and fills this space when the oxygen is depleted when the oxygen content is depleted or decreased or finished and the candle is ready to get burned off that space which was filled with the oxygen will now be occupied by the water inside so as soon as the candle is about to get burned off the amount of water outside the beaker will, will enter inside the glass that is one tenth of the glass will be filled with water the difference between these two is this candle will burn for a longer time because the length of the glass is more the amount of air will be more inside so this proves the presence of oxygen burning candle and rising water experiment and then even after the candle burns off and the oxygen is completed the level of oxygen is completed there will be still some amount of air left inside the glass that some amount of air which was left inside the glass will be nothing but nitrogen understood so even after the candle burns off and the oxygen level is decreased or depleted then there will be some amount of gas still left inside the glass which doesn't help in burning that gas which was left inside the glass after depletion of oxygen which doesn't help in burning is nitrogen gas that is how the presence of nitrogen can also be proved after the candle got burned off after the oxygen level depleted there was still some amount of gas left in the glass which which doesn't help in burning that gas is nothing but the nitrogen so here we have proved the water vapor oxygen and nitrogen content exists in the air next gas is carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide accounts for a small component of air around us because carbon dioxide is only 1% of the total air so that is the reason it accounts for only small component and then plants and animals during the respiration process take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so plants and animals consume oxygen during respiration and produce carbon dioxide in the daytime during the photosynthetic activity plants take in oxygen in the daytime during the photosynthetic activity plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen whereas during the night time when there is no photosynthetic activity plants also behave like human beings they take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so plants and animals consume oxygen during respiration and produce carbon dioxide 
and then if we are burning the plants, dried plants or the plants which have been cut or we are burning the animal matter, then in that stage also oxygen is consumed and carbon dioxide and other gases are produced. Always any burning process requires oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide. Same way in the candle experiment also it burned only in the presence of oxygen. So suppose if we are burning plant matter or animal matter, then it burns only in the presence of oxygen. It takes, it takes all the oxygen to burn and gives out carbon dioxide. So that is the reason suppose if we are standing in a room where something is burning or we are standing at a place where anything is burning, we feel difficult to respire, we feel suffocation. That means we feel some type of difficulty in respiration. Why? Because there is lots of amount of carbon dioxide in that room. Where anything is burning, the thing which is burning uses all the oxygen and evolves a lot of carbon dioxide. That is the reason we feel suffocation when we stand near something which is burning. So that indicates the presence of carbon dioxide. Next comes nitrogen. So in the burning candle rising water experiment, after the candle was put off, after the oxygen level depleted, there was still some amount of air left in the glass. So that air which was left in the glass after the candle turned off indicates the presence of nitrogen. Nitrogen accounts for 4, 4 by 5th part of the space of the air. So first, if the air is rated on a scale of 5, so nitrogen accounts for the 4 parts of the air which was left after oxygen was depleted. And this air doesn't help in burning. So clear, right? That was the presence of nitrogen. Let's move on to the dust and the smoke. And the last component of the air is dust and the smoke. So you know that burning fuels emit smoke. Like suppose if you are traveling on the roads, cars, bikes, autos, everything emits smoke because petrol and diesel are burning, CNG is burning. Then smoke contains great amount of gases and dust. Because the smoke is emitted from the vehicles, the smoke contains lot of dust as well as many harmful gases which when we inhale may affect our health. That is the reason traffic police wear masks to prevent themselves from harmful gases, dust and the smoke. And factories have chimneys on a greater height which emit smoke. Suppose sometimes we observe factories have big big pipes like chimneys which emit smoke, black colored smoke. Why are those chimneys placed at a greater height? Because those harmful gases should not reach the human beings. That is the reason chimneys are placed on a greater heights. But then these gases affect the birds flying above them and may have some harmful effect on the birds flying above those chimneys. Because birds will inhale those gases. And then suppose if the room is dark, in a dark room, through a slit or hole, we observe beam of sunlight entering. If a room is completely dark and there is a small hole in it, then sunlight will be entering through that hole which will look like a straight line of beam of a sunlight. In that beam of a sunlight also we observe much air and dust particles. Small small particles we observe right in a dark room if sunlight is entering. So that indicates dust. In a dark room through a slit or a hole we observe beam of sunlight entering the room and then the beam of sunlight contains shiny particles of dust. So that small small dot dot particles what we observe in the air in the beam of sunlight is nothing but dust. And then in winters also, the usually sun rises late. The sun rises in the morning usually little bit late during the winters. At that instances, the sun, in such instances, in such instances the sunlight comes passing through the trees. So in winters, the beam of sunlight travels through the trees, and then in which dust particles appear to dance. So when the beam of sunlight passes from the trees to the ground. In that beam of sunlight also the dust particles will be the dust particles will be continuously moving, which gives us the appearance of the dust particles merely dancing around. So that is how the dust and smoke presence is indicated in the air.